Although glycolysis is a very important process, glycolysis itself is not a perfect process. And what that means is, there's a very important step that is missing in glycolysis. And actually, because this step is missing, glycolysis all by itself will not be able to continue for a very long time. So what step is missing from glycolysis? Well, let's remember step six of glycolysis. So what happened in step six? Well, in step six of glycolysis, that's the beginning of stage three, we essentially take a molecule we call GAP, so glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, and we oxidize it into a molecule we call 1,3-BPG, 1,3-bisphosphoglyceride. And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is known as GAP dehydrogenase. Now, for GAP dehydrogenase to actually function, it must be able to use a coenzyme we call nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide in its oxidized form, namely NAD+. And if it can't use NAD+, if for some reason the NAD+, is not available in a cell, this process will essentially stop, and the entire process of glycolysis will come to stop. Now, the problem with step six and the remaining steps of glycolysis is once the cell uses up NAD plus and transforms it into NADH, that NAD plus is not actually regenerated. So in the process of glycolysis, we use up NAD plus molecules to form the NADHs and those NAD pluses are not actually regenerated at the end of glycolysis. And because our cells have a limited supply of the NAD plus molecules, and by the way, the NAD, uh, NAD plus molecules actually are derivatives of uh, niacine, which is vitamin B3. And so because our cells have a limited supply of the NAD plus, this process of glycolysis will eventually come to a stop when that cell runs out of that limited supply of nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide. And so for this not to actually take place, something else must be done after glycolysis takes place. So something must be done to regenerate that coenzyme, the NAD plus that is necessary for the activity of GAP dehydrogenase that basically catalyzes step six of glycolysis. So once again, in step six of glycolysis, NAD plus nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide in the oxidized form, this is the molecule that comes from niacin, vitamin B3. Basically, this molecule acts as a coenzyme and helps GAP dehydrogenase to transform the GAP molecule, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. And in this process, we see that NAD plus was used up and it was never actually regenerated in the remaining steps of glycolysis. And so this means, uh, this means that glycolysis basically depends on NAD+, and when the concentration of NAD+, basically runs out, the process of glycolysis will come to a stop, and the cell will no longer be able to actually produce those ATP molecules. And the way that our cells fix the problem is by taking the pyruvate molecule and actually using that pyruvate molecule, metabolizing it to regenerate those NAD plus molecules. So, in order for glycolysis to proceed over and over and over, the NAD plus must be regenerated. And so the cell regenerates the NAD plus by breaking down, metabolizing those pyruvate molecules produced at the end of glycolysis. Now, there are two major pathways. We have an aerobic pathway and an anaerobic pathway. Now, in aerobic, that simply means we're going to use oxygen. And in this particular case, the pyruvate molecules travel into the mitochondria and there they're broken down into acetyl coenzyme A. And that molecule goes into the citric acid cycle and that uses the electron transport chain to basically regenerate those NAD plus molecules. But we'll focus on that process in a future lecture. In this lecture, I'd like to focus on the anaerobic process. The anaerobic process takes place in the absence of oxygen. And our own cells and many other cells in nature use this specific type of process that we call fermentation. Now, there are many different examples of fermentation processes, but 
The most common fermentation processes are those that produce lactate or ethanol from the pyruvate molecules. So these are known as ethanol fermentation or alcoholic fermentation or in a case of producing lactate, which is actually the conjugate base of lactic acid, this is known as lactic acid fermentation. So let's focus on uh, ethanol fermentation. So uh, basically, yeast cells and several other bacterial cells utilize this process of fermentation, so alcoholic fermentation, to basically reform those NAD plus coenzyme molecules. And what happens is the pyruvate molecule is ultimately tr uh, are transformed into the ethanol molecule, and this process actually takes place in two steps. The first step is a decarboxylation process and the enzyme that catalyzes this process is known as pyruvate decarboxylase. And so we begin with our pyruvate molecule and in the presence of an H plus ion as well as an important coenzyme known as thiamine pyrophosphate which actually is a thiamine vitamin derivative so thiamine is vitamin B1. So in the presence of this coenzyme, what will happen is this bond will be broken. This H plus will basically create a bond here while this carbon dioxide molecule shown in blue will be released into the environment in the gas form. So we have this CO2 molecule in the gas form and we have this molecule, basically this entire structure plus this H and this is known as acetylaldehyde. Now, this is the first step, and in the second step, this is when we actually produce that ethanol. So in the first step, we have the decarboxylation reaction catalyzed by pyruvate decarboxylase, the coenzyme thiamine pyrophosphate, which is a thiamine derivative, so thiamine vitamin is the vitamin B1. Uh, it assists in this process, which transforms the pyruvate into acetyl, uh, acetylaldehyde, as well as releasing this CO2 molecule shown here. Now, what about step two? Well, in step two, we have a different enzyme, and this enzyme is known as alcohol dehydrogenase. Now, like any dehydrogenase, alcohol dehydrogenase will essentially catalyze the transfer of a hydride group from that NADH onto this acetylaldehyde. Now, if we examine the active site of the alcohol dehydrogenase, we're going to see a zinc ion. And what that zinc ion does, well, first of all, it interacts with the active site of that enzyme, so it actually bonds with residues on that active site. To be more specific, it binds with, the, with two cysteine residues and one histidine residue. And once it binds, it's able to actually interact with this substrate molecule. It polarizes this bond, weakens the bond, and that's exactly what allows the hydride to actually attack this carbon here, and then allowing the H to go into this oxygen. And so ultimately, we form ethanol and we regenerate that NAD+. Now, of course, because we form two pyruvate molecules, that means we have to multiply these two steps by two. And once we multiply these two steps by two, and then we sum up all the processes, the 10 processes of glycolysis, and we sum these as well, this is the net equation that we get. And because we essentially regenerate that NAD+, the NAD+, will cancel from both sides of the equation, so that, is not, that does not appear in this equation. And so the net equation of glycolysis following fermentation, specifically ethanol fermentation, this is our net equation. So a glucose goes in, we use two ADP, two orthophosphates, two H plus ions, and that produces two ethanol molecules, two ATP molecules, two HCO molecules, and two carbon dioxide molecules that came from this process. So we multiplied that by two, and that's where that actually comes from. And notice the NAD pluses and NADHs are canceled out because they are regenerated in this step. Now, what about lactic acid fermentation? So lactic acid fermentation is used by many prokaryotic cells, so bacterial cells that we're going to discuss 
in just a moment, as well as many eukaryotic cells. In fact, the cells of our body also use, under some circumstances, lactic acid fermentation. For instance, when we're exercising strenuously, the skeletal muscles at some point will not be able to uh, get enough oxygen. And in that moment in time, they have to switch to the process of lactic acid fermentation because that allows them to continually generate those ATP molecules. And so that exact, that's exactly what allows the buildup of lactate, so lactic acid in our body, and that eventually causes fatigue. So many prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms undergo lactic acid fermentation. In fact, when the O2 supply runs low in our cells, they use this process to regenerate the NAD+. And this process is a single step process that essentially consists of a, well, not a single step process, but it's more complicated than that, but we can think of it as being one step in the sense that here we have two steps, but here we have one step. So essentially, uh, this process is catalyzed by an enzyme known as lactate dehydrogenase. And again, just like this dehydrogenase and the dehydrogenase that was used in step six of glycolysis, this dehydrogenase, like any dehydrogenase, will essentially catalyze the movement, the, tr <coughs> the transfer of a hydride group from one molecule to another. In this case, it's from this NADH onto this pyruvate molecule. And so ultimately what happens is the hydride from this essentially goes on, attacks this carbon, and then the H is picked up by the oxygen. And so we form this lactate. Now, if an H is picked up by this, that is what we call lactic acid. So lactate is the conjugate base of lactic acid. So we see that the lactate dehydrogenase catalyzes the transfer of the hydride group and so ultimately we regenerate that NAD+. And again, we have to multiply this by two because we have two pyruvate molecules coming in from the process of glycolysis. And again, if we sum up all those reactions in glycolysis and this reaction, this is the net equation that we get. And notice it's slightly different than this equation here because here we produce carbon dioxide, but here we don't have carbon dioxide. And we also don't have the 2H+. So here it becomes glucose plus 2 ADP plus 2 orthophosphates produces 2 lactate, 2 ATP, and 2 water molecules. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, during strenuous exercise, our skeletal muscle cells may not receive an adequate supply of oxygen and these cells will begin to undergo lactic acid fermentation to generate those ATP molecules quickly and effectively. And in that case, there's a buildup of lactate, so lactic acid, and that causes fatigue. Now, our own cells are not the only cells that utilize lactic acid, so, uh, lactic acid fermentation. Many bacterial cells that infect our body and many other organisms utilize lactic acid fermentation. For instance, three important bacterial cells that utilize lactic acid fermentation to basically generate ATP are the following. So we have uh, Clostridium tetani, Clostridium botulinum, and Clostridium perfringens. So Clostridium tetani is that bacterial cell that causes tetanus in humans, also known as lockjaw. We have Clostridium botulinum, which is actually the most toxic bacteria in the world. And interestingly, this is the same bacteria that is used for the plastic surgery we call uh, Botox. So this is the same exact uh, bacteria that is used to make us supposedly prettier. And then we have the Clostridium perfringens. Oh, and, and by the way, this also uh, causes botulism in humans. And so Clostridium, uh, that should be, so Clostridium, there should be an I there. Uh, clostridium. So clostridium perfringens is the disease, is that uh, bacteria that causes gangrene when we have wounds or some types of cuts. So these can be very, very dangerous bacteria. And these three types of bacterial cells essentially are obligate anaerobes. And what that means is they cannot survive in the presence of oxygen and they only utilize fermentation to produce their ATP molecules. So the takeaway lesson from this lecture 
is the fact that glycolysis by itself is not a perfect process and if it's left alone then it will eventually end because it will run out of that supply of the coenzyme NAD plus and so to regenerate that NAD plus and to make sure that the NAD plus is continually used and glycolysis is continually um, is continually taking place and producing ATP molecules in our cells, we have to metabolize the pyruvate. Under aerobic conditions, that's when the citric acid takes a citric acid cycle takes place. Under anaerobic conditions, we have lactate fermentation or lactic acid fermentation, ethanol fermentations, and also many other examples of fermentation processes that we're not going to discuss in this lecture. So in the next lecture, we're basically going to discuss how glucose molecules are not the only molecules that can undergo glycolysis. We have many other examples of sugars that can also enter the cycle of glycolysis, not as glucose molecules, but as something else.